Donald Trump is expected this week to nominate Republican Senator Marco Rubio of Florida as Secretary of State. That's according to three sources familiar with the selection process. The sources also did say, though, Trump still could change his mind on who will fill the role of the country's top diplomat. Trump yesterday also selecting former Congressman Lee Zeldin of New York to oversee the Environmental Protection Agency. Zeldin's nomination widely criticized by environmental groups because of his lack of experience in that area. The post requires Senate confirmation, but Republicans will have the majority in the upper chamber when the new Congress is sworn in. And Donald Trump has asked Republican Congressman Mike Waltz of Florida to be his national security advisor. Waltz is a Green Beret who served in Afghanistan, the Middle East, and Africa, known for hawkish views on China. As a member of the House's China Task Force, he said the U.S. is underprepared if there's a conflict in the region. Waltz also criticized U.S. aid to Ukraine, arguing Russian President Vladimir Putin should be brought to the negotiating table for a, quote, diplomatic resolution to end the war there. Waltz's role as national security advisor does not require Senate confirmation. So a lot in there, Joe, but if we can go back to the beginning just for a minute, which is Senate Rubio. Again, the Trump uh, team has not made that announcement official, but many media outlets, including ours, reporting that he will be the choice. We do know Donald Trump doesn't love a leak before he makes an announcement, so mm. we can wait. Right. But if it is Marco Rubio, John and I were just talking, we're hearing from people even inside the Biden administration, I wouldn't call it celebration, but perhaps relief that it's at least a, a guy who's in the Senate who has experience in this area. Well, who, who, who's in the Senate who ran the intel committee who knows the issues regardless of all the political stuff regardless yep. of the very mixed background he and donald trump have had together if you if you're going to talk and i'm sure david ignatius will confirm this very soon uh but he's a hawk he's he's a real hawk on china he's a hawk on venezuela he's a hawk on cuba and he was a hawk on on russia uh, throughout his Senate career. Now he's saying, of course, what the incoming national security advisor is saying, Jonathan Lemire, and that is that they need to sit down, Ukraine needs to sit down with Russia, and they need to figure out a way to bring this war to an end. And uh, before people say that's too radical, of course, I've mentioned time and time again that the top Pentagon person told me, yeah, uh, a top general at the Pentagon told me in February of last year, this is not going to, you know, these these lines are not going to move. And at some point, we're going to have to figure out how to negotiate an end to this war, even though we can't say it publicly right now. And that is what Marco Rubio and uh, what uh, Congressman Waltz are saying right now is let's figure I think the biggest difference is if it's a Biden administration that's negotiating that deal, then it says, okay, Ukraine's going to have to give up land in return. It will get protection from the United States and membership into NATO eventually. I don't know that you're going to get that from the Trump administration, but that's, that's the big question mark over all of this. Yeah, but first to your first point, I mean, there's been a widely held belief behind closed doors in Washington and Pentagon and foreign policy think tanks that 2025, the year 2025, is when some sort of negotiations will have to begin and perhaps even conclude in the Russia-Ukraine war. That at some point the fighting will slow down, if not altogether cease. There'll be some sort of table where the two sides will meet. Um, you know, Senator Rubio did vote against. He was one of the 15 Republican senators who voted against the last wave of U.S. aid to Ukraine, though he was supportive more in the past. Certainly, the national, incoming national security advisor also skeptical of the U.S. continuing to fund the war effort. Donald Trump himself is that. But you're, to Willie's point earlier, I heard from a number of people within the Biden administration, other foreign policy leaders who also all sort of said with in, almost in one voice, quote, it could have been worse in terms of the Rubio pick, that he is a senator. He does have some national security credentials. He has been a believer in NATO. Now, of course, he's going to serve at the pleasure of the president. He's going to carry out Trump's agenda. But he's at least something of a reassuring figure. Also, it's just who doesn't get that job? The Rick Grinnells, the Cash Patels of the world, who, you know, the real firebrands of the right, uh, of MAGO world, who there was real concern might be put in uh, the foggy bottom post. Now, they may get a big job elsewhere. Obviously, the FBI, CIA, 
Attorney General, those posts all still f empty. We did see Stephen Miller, hardliner, immigration hardliner, going back to mm -hmm. the White House uh, and deputy chief of staff in a role with huge powers. But at least for this, uh, Joe and Mika, at least for this, there's a sense that this the Rubio pick is a signal that there might be at least some grown-ups in the room. Well, let, let's bring it right now to talk about that. Uh, columnist and associate editor for The Washington Post, David Ignatius. And David, uh, we, we sorting through these picks, I would say that the biggest concern for a lot of people, not only in Washington, but around the world who love America and are, are allies uh, of America, they're hoping that there aren't gadflies that are put in these positions, people that like going on podcasts and saying the most outrageous things. Uh, there are obviously some people that have been put in positions that are going to cause concerns. Uh, but you look at chief of staff, Susie Wiles. She worked in the Reagan administration. She's worked uh, for Republicans for years now. W was considered uh, as running a very professional campaign. Mike Walls, Green Beret, um, and, and then Marco Rubio, uh, somebody, as you know, that has vast experience uh, in, in, in foreign policy and in the intel community. So I'm curious your take on, on the picks thus far mm -hmm. and specifically on the incoming national security advisor and uh, the, the possible incoming secretary of state. Mm -hmm. So Joe, my sense is similar to, to yours and, uh, and uh, Johnson. Uh, I, th I think the, the, the general reaction, the, these people are in the group uh, of experienced bipartisan national security figures. Uh, each uh, in Congress was known for working across the aisle. Um, if I were to sum up the sort of winners and losers overseas uh, mm -hmm. from these picks, I, I think it's bad news for Ukraine. These are people who, who say it's time to end the war. It's time for the United States to stop spending as much money. Uh, it's probably good news for Russia because Trump's desire to do a deal with Russia on Ukraine is one of the strongest themes he expressed through the campaign. Both these people can help him do that because they have credibility overseas. It's bad news for China. These are two strong China hawks. If there's one theme that comes through each of their foreign policy statements over the last couple of years, it's antipathy to China, warning about China's uh, military rearmament. Um, so, uh, and then I think finally, uh, we'll have to wait and see what this means for Europeans. The, the question I've had is whether Trump, this time around, is going to want to be more successful as a president working with allies. He, you know, he just really botched a lot of our key relationships. Is he, is he going to work harder with, with the Europeans to, to be a leader of NATO as opposed to a disruptor and destroyer of NATO? I think NATO is ready to follow a path toward negotiations on Ukraine. There's a general sense that the time has come in this war, this terrible, bloody war. Uh, to, to seek some some compromise that was coming uh, whether Harris won or, or Biden won in, in my view so I think it's generally um, you know more responsible respectable if you can say that uh, team that, than you might have, have thought uh, on, on domestic policy t Trump's gonna gonna do what he what he said he would on on border issues in particular you look at Tom Holman you know that so you look at the fact that Stephen Miller's back you know that so but in foreign policy this is uh, I don't want to say establishment because they're not that, but they're, they're a little more in the, the mainstream of foreign policy uh, right. advisors than I would have thought. 